And with that, I will turn it over to our feature presentation. Who happens to be? Who happens to be? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Craig Maloney, and I will be talking about the Mycroft AI. Oh, you don't need to demo too much because this is going to be a demo as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's no, this is this is live demo. This is me without a net on <laughs> short notice. So hopefully it will be good. So you're probably familiar with a lot of these home assistants or uh, voice assistants or whatnot. Um, there's about a billion of them out there in the market, mostly from Amazon, Google, and Apple, um, going by various names. You know. The A1, the S1, <laughs> the G1, the Cortana. I don't think anyone here has Cortana, so I can say that probably safely without having something trigger. Um, but the thing with a lot of these things is that they, there's, there's some question about what happens with the data on these things. So in one instance, uh, apparently Amazon Echo recorded a family's conversation and then sent it to a random person in their contacts. <laughs> that sounds like fun, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, just random conversations to random folks. Knock yourselves out. But there have been some questions about what happens with the data. and what. Um, I think there was another instance where Amazon uh, was on the hook for apparently a murder or something like that. And, and the, you know, the A, the A word device was sitting there listening to it. And they were trying to figure out what the evidence was that was on there. So, and whether that, that particular device was listening. You had an instance <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fun. Uh, yeah. This was uh, when we first got uh, Alexa, and uh, we had a, uh, a board meeting at my house, and uh, I had it playing uh, some background music before everybody got there, and so I told her to stop when everybody was in the room. Yes. And uh, they, you know, I mean, it's friendly banter ensued and uh, <laughs> somebody uh, asked Alexa to order me yes who will remain nameless, yes, uh, nameless uh, and <laughs> may have uh, asked Alexa to order me two tons of rice yes <laughs> which then well, became two tins of well, rice yeah, the next day shows up two boxes of cookies yes <laughs> out of this and it, it turns out that so we expect that uh, the two Tons of rice got translated into tins of ricin, which was the name of the cookie. Yeah, and rice. So rice. <laughs> yeah. Tins of rice. Yeah. Yes. Tins of rice, yeah. which was the name. Yeah. On the, uh, of, uh, and then, and then in the ensuing uh, conversation, somehow it got the okay word that it was okay to go ahead and do this. I can't imagine how that would have happened. Yes. But, but it, it did work out that since my wife, who monitors these things for me decided that we hadn't ordered that, she objected and they took it off the bill. They don't want food sent back. So no. the meeting had two tins of cookies. So we had Which them were, here? Yeah, 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 we had them here. They were really good, too. These things can be handled. Yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it was a happy mistake. And they're good cookies. So yeah. You want to oh, it was a happy little cookies. accident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, yeah, a lot of these things are tied to companies that are looking to get either your data or they're looking to get, you know, your shopping habits, all this other type of stuff. And I'm not going to spend the whole meeting, you know, roasting any of these companies or whatnot. You know, there's, there's plenty of other folks that will do that for us. I want to talk about something that we can do that's more positive than this, and that is Mycroft. So Mycroft is an open source, open platform for doing voice assistance stuff. And I've got some examples of some of the, uh, the material here. Um, so some of these things are in the future. Some of these things are like partnerships that they're working with and whatnot. I think there's one with Jaguar and Land Rover um, that they're doing as well for voice assistance inside the car and that. So it's open source. It's released under an Apache uh, 2.0 license. You can find all the source code um, under the, re the repo, uh, mycroft.ai or Mycroft AI on GitHub. It's all written in Python, so if you're a Python developer, this is right up your alley. Um, it's really cool stuff in there. And it's built on open hardware. And when they mean open hardware, they mean literally all the stuff that they have, you can go and replicate if you are so inclined. So what about the back end? Uh, there is pairing with uh, home.mycroft.ai uh, that's not quite open source yet. So and I'm sure 
you know, there are some folks whose antenna just went up just a little notch. You know, it's like, oh, that's all, not all open source. Who controls that data? They're very open with what they do with that particular data. Um, first off, the home that Mycroft AI, that's so that they can uh, maintain things like API keys. There's some fallback skills for Wolfram, AI, uh, Wolfram Alpha, Open Weather Map, Google Speech to Text, and a few others here and there. Um, that they maintain API keys for. So you don't have to go out and get yourself a developer key so that you can get the weather. You know, that's kind of a pain in the butt anyways. Um, it handles configuration over multiple devices as well. And they intend to release the source code uh, very soon. I don't know if it's been released yet. They kind of made intimations that they were doing so. There's also folks that are working on alternate backends as well. So they're, they're really open about making sure that people get what they want out of this and that they can be configured however you want it to be uh, to work. So there's several devices that support Mycroft. Uh, the Mark I, which is available right now, which looks a little something like this guy. Uh, there is the Mark II, which is on pre-order. Um, it was supposed to ship in December 2018, and I'll talk about why that didn't happen. Uh, there's a desktop version on Linux, uh, so you can run it on your desktop if you are so inclined, so you don't necessarily have to get up and get some more hardware. You can build it on Android and uh, knock yourselves out if you want to go and do that. Um, I don't know exactly what all is involved with it, but apparently you need Android Studio to make that happen. And then there's Pycroft, where you can run it on a Raspberry Pi. Um, and I'll talk about how that works. So the first device that was put out, that's kind of the reference device, is the Mycroft Mark I. And what's neat about this is it is fully open hardware. Um, these little devices here, these are NeoPixels. There's an um, Arduino in the back of it as well, driving all that stuff, driving the faceplate. And it's using a Raspberry Pi on the inside of it, along with some hardware uh, board to try and tie it all together. And uh, it also literally is open source, open hardware. You've got the GPIO header up there. It's not Raspberry Pi pin compatible, but if you want to get uh, have it drive stuff directly from the GPIO bus, you can. You got an HDMI port on the back of it, because the Raspberry Pi's got it, so why not? So they actually had a picture of them putting HDMI adapters into the back of the Raspberry Pi and then popping it out into the back of the system. And then you have your standard Raspberry Pi ports as well. You've got stereo speaker output, and you got uh, an adapt. I don't remember what the voltage is on that, but it's standard and it comes with it. And here's an exploded view of that. So you can see over there in the very bottom, you've got the Raspberry Pi, you've got the hardware that they've got in between, um, and you don't necessarily see it, but there's like a little Arduino floating up top there uh, that plugs into that. There's a pot there for their volume control, and it's a push down twist uh, volume control, and then you have a board in the front for the eyes and the mouth on it. And there's another view of it. I wasn't gonna try and sit here and try and open one for you, but I'll show you why that's possible. Um, so again, the Raspberry Pi there, there's a little cable that hooks out for the HDMI port. The Mycroft Mark II is the next generation device of this. Um, it's on Indiegogo right now. You can pre-order it. It's about $179 um, at the moment. The problem that they're running into it with it is they're using, um, they're trying to do a different form factor. They're trying not to do an, a Raspberry Pi. They're doing their own FPGA uh, board using, I think it's Xilinx. And the problem is that the board that they're getting uh, back from the suppliers are, is not up to snuff. It's like an eight layer board or something like that. And they're running into some heat issues with it as well. They're, they're confident that they're going to make it in 2019. I'll be a little surprised if they do, but because it's hardware. I mean, hardware, it takes longer than everyone expects it to do. But this is a really cool looking device. Uh, it's using KDE Plasma for this screen. So it will display different things on the front of it, um, depending on what mode it's in. And of course, you have the, you know, the happy little face and whatnot. So it'll be a cool device when it finally ships, but be patient because it's already running a little later than they expected it. So how this works. So on a Mycroft device, what it does is it will, and this is from their Indiegogo. So I didn't do this particular graphic. So what happens is the user will say something like, hey, Mycroft, set a timer for 10 minutes. 
that'll be picked up by the microphones and it will then uh, be translated through a speech to text. And right now they're using Mozilla's deep speech on the back end. Uh, Mozilla has been working very quietly on a uh, speech to text system to compete with Google and some of the other companies out there that are doing speech to text. It's actually really good um, as far as speech to text. Uh, it's not something though that I think you would want to install yourself um, until they get it, all the kinks and whatnot worked out. So I think that still goes over to their servers and whatnot, but you get like a little audio clip that goes over to the server and then pops back. So that comes through and says set a timer for 10 minutes. And then there is this uh, pedacious is what the system is that splits it up to figure out intent. So you'll see the sentence set a timer for 10 minutes becomes set timer 10 minutes, which then gets popped back out into the timer um, bit. And then the text to speech, which is mimic, um, which is based off of festival. So if anyone remembers festival, um, where you get the, the thing that'll come back and you know tell you all sorts of wonderful stuff. It's based off of that technology. Um, it's made for a lower power device because you're running off of a Raspberry Pi. You don't want anything that's really CPU intensive. You want something that's pretty low latency as well. So they forked that um, into Mimic. And then it goes to the speakers and then boom, out comes, all right, 10 minutes starting now. And I'll show a little bit more about how this works um, with the actual devices. So let's jump into that. The first device that I'm going to show you is probably the least, um, the, the one that will show just some of the capabilities. It's going to be the least impressive out of all of this stuff. So this is, um, this is on my local machine, on my local laptop. I'm going to start up a Mycroft system um, and make sure that I don't have the, I have a proxy that I usually run. So I'll start off my, uh, Mycroft SH. Let me do an LS here real quick, just to show you what's in here. So they have um, a bunch of files. It's all Python uh, based as well. And they have a script over there for dev setup, which will set up a virtual environment into your system. Um, and it will download all of the stuff that it needs to do. Uh, the one thing, this system is a little old. Uh, this laptop is a 14.04 uh, laptop. Don't be judging. Um, so certain things uh, don't necessarily compile in here. So Pedacious is a little flaky. This is also me trying to get this all working on Sunday night. Um, so it's, it's got some issues, but it's a good demo of what we're gonna get. So if I run start Mycroft here, and I actually type in debug, we'll start the CLI. So over on this side here, when it actually starts up, well, is it going to be? It's going to be very unhappy with me, isn't it? All right. I'm not sure I understood you. Okay, this is not going to work the way that I expected it to work. This is what live demos are all about. <laughs> So what would happen over here is this would show the microphone level. Uh, this will show the history of what all it, it had sent over to it. Um, and then it has the log output legend, which will tell you what's debug output, what's coming from skills log and other logs, and what's coming from the voice log in here. So let me try it one more time, see if that'll work. And if not, then we'll just move on to one of the other systems. There we go, all right. This should be jumping all around. So this is uh, actually recording my voice right now as we speak. So if I say something like, hey Mycroft, what time is it? So it'll come back and say, begin recording here. It'll say end recording. And then it'll say the wake word was detected, hey Mycroft, the utterance, what time is it? <laughs> It's 7.12 still, very good. Um, so then it comes back and says, what time is it? And then comes back with the, with the answer to that. Hey, Mycroft, who is Abraham Lincoln? Abraham Lincoln is an American 
statesman and lawyer who served as the 16th president of the United States. So it went to Wikipedia, I think, for that particular one. Um, but yeah, you get a full log of what exactly it is doing here. Um, unfortunately, this one is a little bit um, special because of the com compilation issues. So what I will do is I'll start talking about some of the other ones that are on the table here. So Craig, are they running, they're running a server that you connected to right Yes, now, right? yes. And just for nothing? I mean, uh, what are they, how are they monetizing it? They are monetizing it several ways. Uh, the first way is via memberships. So if you want the premium voice, like the one that you just heard that doesn't sound all robotic and like Alan Pope, bless Alan Pope for his lovely voice. Actually, I, I prefer that voice over the one that they've got. But anyways, um, the premium voice you, you subscribe to, and it's about 20 bucks a year for the premium voice. One of the other ways that they are monetizing is through their automotive partnerships with Jaguar and Land Rover, and also via um, a, a investment opportunity. Uh, so there's a company that they are partnered with, and I think it was on the first slide here. If you go to their site, you cannot help but miss it. It's all over the place. Um, Start Engine is what it's called. And it's, you can barely see it on here because they've got it in that lovely, you know, green, uh, slightly green and on, on darker green. Uh, but it support us on Start Engine. So you can invest in this company if you would like to. Um, and they, they're trying to do it so that they're not taking so much VC money. Because the problem is when you do VC money, then VC money comes back and says, hey, we'd like you to do some VC things. Yeah, I don't. They were talking about actually doing a crypto on uh, one of these devices, which I'm not a huge fan of because they're already Raspberry Pis and if they're running hot. Then yeah, that could be bad, especially in a cardboard enclosure. Uh, <laughs> any other questions? Yes. Is it sending the audio to the cloud, or is it interpreting the audio locally? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think what um. My understanding is that it is sending the audio to the cloud, and then that audio is then, you can mark whether that audio can be used as part of their open data set or not. And so then other people can learn from that, and Mozilla can learn from it. So otherwise, it'll just, it'll just uh, time out, and it'll be erased. So it's on their servers, I think, for just a brief moment, and then it's gone. Um, and it should be brief enough for it to actually do what it needs to do. Let me... Uh, talk about this so Google released an AIY project voice kit you can get this uh, retail price is $35 you can pick these over at my uh, micro center between anywhere from five to twenty five dollars depending on what day of the week it is um, pretty much and what this is is this is a kit it doesn't come with the Raspberry Pi itself but it comes with the enclosure so you get a box you get a speaker you get a little board in here that's the, the Pi hat for um, the voice hat, I think is what it is. You get some controller, uh, some cable and whatnot, and a microphone. And what you can do with this is you don't necessarily have to use the Google bits in order to go and, use the, and make it a Google device. You can download an image, and you can make yourself a Piecroft is what they call it. And so it was about 60 bucks, I'd say, all told, with you know, getting the card, the uh, Raspberry Pi, and the adapter, and all that other kind of stuff. And so what you have in here is you have all this stuff baked in here. And I'm, I'm not going to try and you know, take it apart or whatnot, because I probably have all sorts of fun trying to get it back together. Um, but it's basically a Mycroft system inside of a Raspberry Pi inside of this Google AIY enclosure. And what that looks like is the following. Let me plug it in. And a little light is on. And it'll sit for just a second while it connects to the internet. And hopefully, if I set it up properly, it will let me know that it is ready to go. Let me see if I can SSH into that. Okay. So this is actually using Mycroft software on a Raspberry Pi device um, using the image and such. I 
I need to restart after synchronizing my clock with the internet. Be right back. Okay. Is it going to actually knock me out of here? Because <laughs> that would be fun. So this is also based off of an Ubuntu. Um, I'm sorry. It's based off of. I think it's this one is based off of the um, Debian Raspbian image. Um, I think some of their later versions are based off of the Ubuntu 1804 uh, images as well. So there, there, there were some growing pains and whatnot for them migrating over to 1804 because of um, the graphics drivers and the sound drivers uh, changed dramatically. Um, so there, that was one of the issues that they were running into with the Mark II device uh, was the transition. So, but anyways, when it's uh, all powered up, you have yourself a very mostly capable voice assistant that you built yourself that you can take a look at its internal runnings and see how it works. Let me see if this is, uh, da -da 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 -da, let me log in again. Are you ready to go or what? <laughs> so are you SSHing to it to get mainline output? I'm SSHing in it to show you what it's doing behind the scenes. Um, it's also a nice way if you don't want to actually say something out loud, you can type it in to uh, this history area here. So I can say, you know, what time is it? Please wait a moment as I finish booting up. Okay, so I didn't actually have to say that. Could you script it to that? You probably could. You probably could. So it will finish booting up. It's failed to find intent. What the heck? I don't know how it's doing that. I'm not entirely sure. Please wait a moment as I finish booting up. <laughs> All right. You know what? I'm going to help it. <laughs> I'm going to help it along now. here. It's always great to do live demos, isn't it? It's fun. It yeah. Um, so one of the things that I can show you, too, is uh, home.mycroft.ai. And what that has, when Google decides to come back, What that has on it is that has uh, the devices that I've paired with it and also has the skills that the Mycroft system understands. So the skills are, well, they, they're basically what they say on the tent. They're what the, the device is capable of doing. And so they have all sorts of different skills on there, like um, one skill, and maybe you can do this. Hey, Mycroft. No, it's going to be, it's going to be crabby, isn't it? Um, there we go. An error occurred while processing a request in auto volume. Yeah, I was trying to get rid of auto volume. <laughs> That's why there's an error processing the request. All right. Am I going to have to? I have not finished booting up. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, Mycroft, how many days until Christmas? Three hundred and fifty-one days. So you have a little time before the next uh, shopping. So Perfect. what it did is it, it said where it went off to, and I'm not sure exactly where it's showing up in here, uh, but it said that it went over to Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha is one of the fallback skills that it has. So if there is something that it doesn't necessarily know how to do. There's a few fallbacks that it will do. So if I said how many blah, blah, blahs, that's probably a question for Wolfram Alpha. So it'll go to that. If I say 
who is such and such, then it will throw it over to Wikipedia. And if I do a search on such and such, then it will go over to DuckDuckGo. Um, so if I want to just ask it, um, hey, Mycroft, what's the latest version of Ubuntu? I am running Mycroft Core version 18.08 release, and you are on the latest version. The problem with this sometimes is that certain keywords can be taken over by certain skills. That skill is the asking it what the current version is, and it decided to tell me that it's on the version uh, 10.8. Uh, so that was the October, I think, yeah. That was the October version of this. Hey, Mycroft, how old is Linus Torvalds? Nine years 11 days okay so he just had a birthday I guess we all missed it sorry we should have given him a card um, so yeah you can ask it all sorts of wonderful questions you can also say hey Mycroft flip a coin it is tails world's best decision maker <laughs> you don't even have to get the coin out Craig? yes does it have a detector in here so that if somebody runs a commercial, I think they have that for Alexa now, if somebody runs a commercial on TV, yeah. and, and on TV they say, hey Alexa, I think there's a subtone running there, so you don't have three million Alexas all responding to it. Yeah, I don't know um, if, that, if that has that kind of technology. Um, the problem with this is that the way that I had it set up and where I had it located, it would fire off for just about anything. And it drove my wife Jody nuts because uh, it would just blame for no apparent reason. Um, so she's got a, a slightly dim, dimmer view of uh, of Mycroft than I do. Yeah. She's not nearly as excited as I am about it because it would it would go off for you know television shows. And I think part of it was because of the mic placement that I had on there. I had it too far back, and I think that that was interfering with stuff. Sure. Does it carry over context from the last question that you asked? Like, for example, you asked, like, how many years, how old is that person? And can you make a statement after that, after getting the results, and say, like, uh, how many children does she have? It depends on the skill, and most of them don't support it. It's, it's a little naive on some of this stuff. Um, there are certain skills where I can ask it something like, hey, Mycroft, upgrade. I don't understand, but I'm learning new things every day. Of course you do. Um, so you can ask it to upgrade, and it will say, I'm on such and such version. Do you wish to upgrade? And you can then tell it yes or no, and it will then do the upgrade for you. Uh, ta -da. Let's see here. What other things can I demo here on this device? You know what? I'm going to sh shut this one down for the time being because some of the more interesting stuff is on the Mark One. So let me shut you down. I, I could, if I trusted it, to do what I expected it to do. As I think what it'll do is it'll shut down its front end stuff, but it won't actually shut down the, the Raspberry Pi device itself. And because it's a Raspberry Pi, I wanted to make sure that it's all the way shut down. So that way I can unplug it. So that way it's also not doing a chorus of, of saying all its wonderful stuff. So this is the Mark One. And this is the, the reference hardware, prototype hardware, whatever you want to call it. It comes in this lovely box. It says, hello, my name is Mycroft. It's very friendly. Um, one of the things that impressed me about this company is, first off, it gives you a little guide on how to get it all set up. Very nice brochure. But it also gives you a Torx wrench. And the Torx wrench is for partly for the back uh, ports here. You see there's some uh, these screws and whatnot. So if you wanted to remove them or customize them however you want, you could do that. And also these feet come off on the bottom of it so that you can pull it apart. Um, and I think it uses the same, the same wrench for that. So they give, they're, they're encouraging you to open it up and explore with it and play with it, which is really nice. The other thing that they give you, since it's got a micro SD card, they give you the adapter. I don't know how many times I have been in look of you know trying to find an adapter, at least on some of my older machines. 
You know, now I've got the, the wonderful little USB. But they give you that. So that's kind of nice. On some of the earlier ones, it also had a note that says, if you're looking for a consumer device, put me on the shelf for a while, about 2019, and then I'll be ready for you. Um, this one, I don't think it has, it doesn't say nearly as much on that. But it's just, it's a really well designed, well thought out uh, product. So for those of you who have, you know, that, that I, you know, that, that love of product and whatnot, and, you know, really well thought out stuff, this is, I think What's this that is device run? This is running. Um, no, I meant uh, price wise. Uh, this is about one hundred and eighty dollars. So the new one is going to be about the same price. Yeah. So it's a little pricey for what it is, but on the same token, if you were trying to build it yourself, mm -hmm. you would probably. I mean, this this was the cheap option. This is and this is about sixty dollars all told, unless you've got a Raspberry Pi laying around the house. Almost there. Yeah, set the sink and ready to go. Yeah. It'll and these are also wireless as well. I only have them hooked up this way because um, I didn't want to try and reset the wireless. And whatnot. Yes. Um, is it just no English? There is our. There are folks that are trying to get it to learn other languages right now. Its primary language is, is in English, um, but it, it does understand metric as well. So it's not. Um, one of the configuration options is for whether you wanted to use kilometers versus meters, I have not finished Fahrenheit yet. versus Celsius, etc. Um, but yeah, the, the language right now is, cur is currently English with plans to do more with that. Um, I don't know what those, those plans are at the moment, though. All right, so let me get out of this one. So one of the few, th the cool things about this is it has a menu on it. So you have the illumination, so you can pick, tell it uh, whether you want it to do auto, if you want the blue LEDs to go down. You can customize the LED color. Um, there's also Wi-Fi. You can set up your Wi-Fi pass with it, and it, it will, when you bring it up, it will say, um, I need to be on the internet. You can hook up to me. I'm now a Wi-Fi hotspot, whatever. Oh. Type in this password, and then you can type in what your Wi-Fi password is, rather than sitting here with this knob, you know, and trying to find joy with it. Um, <laughs> can we see the password? The the Wi-Fi password? Yeah. I don't know, and I don't want my Wi-Fi password broadcast, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to hide that. <laughs> You can reboot it from here, uh, so you don't have to SSH into it. You can turn it off as well. Um, I think that only turns off uh, the Raspberry Pi. It doesn't turn off the front end piece of it, so it'll sit there and just kind of stare at you. Yeah. The menu is a little short for my taste of demoing it. Uh, you can run it through some tests. You can turn on SSH from here. So it, <laughs> by default, it comes with it turned off. Oh, come on. Really? Come on. SSH logins are now allowed. Yes, our logins are now allowed. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can reset it as well, and then you can do a demo. I've never actually suffered through the demo. Does anybody want to see that? Yes. Of course you do. <laughs> Starting. <laughs> so the Mycroft uh, PMP for uh, is uh, at almost nine hundred or almost nine hundred thousand dollars of their one point zero seven million goal. Got six days left, and I do accept. you doing as far as demo here? Is it? Is it just running to
Mycroft, what time is it? Currently 7.33. Apparently the demo eyes are going to keep doing that. <coughs> so I'm not to do so. Okay, so when you reboot on it, it goes cycling through all that. And then I think this just went and killed itself. All right, let me show you the home.mycroft.ai site. So are they aiming to compete with Google and Alexa and I don't think there's any way for them to really compete with Google and Alexa because those are way entrenched. What they're looking to be is the alternative to Google and Alexa. Okay. And how about capability-wise? You know, if we were to run it head to head versus. Uh, really, it won't hook up to. Um, Not right now. It won't. Um, um, so in terms of the who, who it's competing with, they've got a little chart on their uh, their investment thing showing that by 2021 they suspect it's going to be a 15 billion dollar market. Yeah. And the little chart here shows you know this is how much of it is um, you know the other guys, and then the big blue thing is as they label it segment that cares about privacy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it, though. Um, so the, they're pledging not to keep record record of what you say and not to keep anything on it. Exactly. So they're 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 playing they're playing a longer game in a sense. The longer game is that you're not they're trying to create a device that is not going to invade your privacy and it's not going to sell your data. And they're trying to be very open with what it is that they're doing with that data. So if I head over here, um, I think it was account. Oh, I'm a yearly supporter. Uh, settings. Let me go here. So on the settings, there's an option down at the very bottom uh, about open data sets. And what you can do is you can select whether you want your data that you are sending them, your voice, you whether you want that to be saved as part of their open data set. They've created their own data set, though. So Mozilla has a data set that is um, available to everyone. Mycroft created their own data set because then they could ensure folks, hey, this is what we are doing with this. We're still going to be part of the community, but we're also trying to keep our, our word to our customers that we're not going to be sending their data out without their permission and outside of their the sphere of influence that they have. So I can select it if I wanted to. So I could, you know, everything that I say to this thing could then be part of that open data set. I've chosen not to do that um, just because I want to feel it out just a little bit more. But that's my own personal thing. If you want to, you know, open it up, feel free to do so. And, and is the feeling that, I mean, they're, they're obviously not going to put your identification with it. They're no, it's supposed to be anonymized. To, so people can analyze yeah. how it treated that and what it did with yeah. that and uh, those it, it, it. it's not so much me because my voice is already out there it's uh, that I live with someone else and they may not necessarily want their conversations and you know in mistaken firings and whatnot being saved for posterity for other folks um, that's that's where I'm erring on the side of uh -huh. other than the description of the business just going back to sure. the idea of what the what the competitive says incumbent com competitors like Apple, Google, and Amazon seem indestructible, but historically, open alternatives become industry standards over closed ecosystems. Exactly. And that's the game that they're playing. They're playing at the idea that there are going to be enough people over time, and there's going to be enough uh, things that happen with voice assistance where people are going to start questioning whether they want to be sending their data over to an Amazon or a Google or probably even a Facebook at some point. Um, 
or you know apple tends to be a little more on the privacy side of this stuff but they're also another company and there's have interests in what people are saying and what people are doing with their devices and the sort of things that they're asking of their devices so this is this is aimed at the alternative of this is for folks who don't necessarily want to be sending all of their data to large corporations. At that, the end of the day, it's still an open microphone to their server. It's still an open microphone to their server, but the, the idea of it is that it only fires whenever I say, Hi, hey, Mycroft. Otherwise, it's not doing anything. Now, of course, it's an open microphone, but it's only an open microphone for it long enough to try and figure out what my intent is, and then it shuts off. <coughs> They're working on alternatives, but they're also working on having a locally served instance of this this home system, so that you would not have to go outside of your own environment. Yeah. And we could also, if if we wanted to, I you know I could figure out. You know, let me do this. Let's see how capable it is. Hey, Mycroft, what time is it? So it's going to be a little crabby right now because I haven't set it up to go outside. It can't even use its own internal clock. Well, it, it can't figure out what I'm trying to say is what it is. I can still. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Can't interpret. So yeah. you said something, but it can't send it to the server. In the yes. Cloud and there are ways to configure it so that it uses it locally as well. I think there's a local option. It's just this is the way that it's set up by default. And this is the way that it's set up. And it's, this is how I've got it set up right now. So let me plug you back in. Does it have an internal clock that I press the computer? Yes. It's yes. A Pi. Yes. It's a Raspberry Pi. So it's got that all set, uh, set in there. There's no battery backup on it, though. Oh, there's no battery. No, it's still going to have to go out and get the uh, go to the internet in order to get its clock. Hey, Mycroft, what time is it? 7:40. Okay. So now it's saying that it's 7:40. Um, you heard a sample of the, the British male voice, um, and if anyone's been with Festival for any length of time or some of the other uh, text-to-speech things. It took me quite a long time to develop a voice, and now that I have it, I am not going to be silent. There's also an American female voice. It took me quite a long time to develop a voice, and now that I have it, I am not going to be silent. I think at one point they also had the Google text-to-speech uh, voice as well um, but now that they're trying to move away from that they don't have that uh, I can t show you a few things here number one you can set whether um, what your units are um, it defaults to metric units because there's a lot of more interest on this stuff over in uh, metric company uh, countries and whatnot or at least at one point I had it where I could not get it to not give me metric units and so I was converting um, Yes, you can change this at any time. I mean, and it goes across all, oh, if you, um, hey, Mycroft, what's 70 degrees in Celsius? Yeah, you can, I can select this and it would uh, change it all over to metric. Can I do that? I don't want to do that. Because <laughs> then it'll be metric at some point. Uh, but yes, I could do that. Well, you know what? I can change it over from uh, to 24 hour time. Let's do that. No, no. It has to be from here. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't understand the question. All right, let me say this. There's also uh, advanced things. So let's say that you are not a fan of calling it Mycroft. Say you want to call it something else. You can create a custom wake word. You could probably do Alexa. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, <laughs> and it has a phoneme thing. So you can use the tool so that you can get the proper phonemes and that for it. Uh, also the sample rate, threshold, etc. You can select which engine it uses. 
Um, so you can use Mimic or Google and the voice as well. Um, so I'm just going to stick with Mimic for the time being. So let's show some of the skills that it can do. Because unfortunately, if there's not really much for it to do, then it's, you know, you get bored very quickly asking it, you know, metric conversions, who Abraham Lincoln is, and what the time is. It also does the weather. It also does the weather. Hey, Mycroft, what's the weather? It's currently overcast clouds and 40 degrees. Today's forecast is for a high of 40 and a low of 29. So it will. I put that in there, yeah. So I give it a location, and then it figures that location off of that. It uses Open Weather Map um, for its backend stuff. They're a little, they're they're mostly good. Um, some of the forecasts are a little off, but they're they're pretty decent. Um, so the skills, these are um, the skills that are currently on here. It has an alarm. Uh, you can also set a timer. Hey, Mycroft, set a timer for ten seconds. All right, so I can set a timer there. Yeah, I'm starting a timer for 10 seconds. There's a chat bot, chat bot fallback. Hey, Mycroft, stop timer. You can stop that. <laughs> we'll play music. We'll, we'll go out and hey, Mycroft. Very hard to do when you're not actually looking at it. Hey, Mycroft, play news. Here is the latest news. NPR podcasts are now available on So it basically does the NPR Check podcast. Check out all our shows at npr.org slash. You can also... And this is why I don't demo this stuff on the cellular device, because this button doesn't do anything, so you have to yell at it. It's like, hey, Minecraft, stop. Hey, Minecraft, stop. And it's like, it won't do it. <laughs> this one has the, the glorious, lovely button that works. <laughs> so The shut-off button. The shut-off button. The, oh, my God, please stop <laughs> button. <laughs> um, you can have it show the, di the digital clock uh, when it's idle. Uh, you can do custom installs as well, so you can give it a skill. And it will install via that. Uh, da -da -da, what else? Uh, the eye colors, you can change the eye color if you'd like. So if you want to make your eyes purple, you can do so. And should eventually become purple. You can tell it which uh, news service you want it to use. And there's a selection of some good ones here. Um, if you want German news, by all means, knock yourselves out. Uh, uh, you can set the temperature unit. So if you wanted to change over something, let's say you're, in, you know, let's say you're in one of those countries where you use imperial for everything else but the temperature, you can change that here. Um, you can set up Pandora as well, so you can give it your Pandora stuff. I don't use Pandora personally or <coughs> Spotify, but you can do that. You can select podcasts as well. I have not gotten that to work for love or money, um, but you can do that if you'd like. And uh, audio docking, ducking. Oh, when the wake word is detected, you can, whenever the the wake word is, you can have it just duck out on there. And then there's the here place API for what's nearby. Um, hey, Mycroft, what's nearby? Please don't define nearby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, thank you. <sighs> Some of the things work better than others. That's what I will have to say. Um, you can do an audio recorder on here as well. Um, I have not done so. Uh, auto volume as well, the finished booting skill. Let me sign in here because none of these are showing up. Are there any questions? So all I of feel these like settings and stuff are just being stored out in the cloud, right? Yes, yes, exactly. And then, uh, it just sends voice snippets to the cloud to be to be processed and then the device comes back with that and says okay here we go so it's not storing any of this on the device no yes so AI in some cases have things called a model a group of knowledge that it's acquired is 
So, and some of the AIs are starting to be able to share that and you know, accumulate mm -hmm. knowledge and things. Is this set up to allow it to make use of knowledge from other things, or is it pretty much just locked down to whatever it knows? It's pretty much locked down to what it knows. And the way that it knows more stuff is via skills. Um, so it's, it's not doing any kind of machine learning or any of that stuff that I'm aware of. The only machine learning that it may be doing is for the, the voice detection stuff and for the actual text to, or the speech to text stuff. Um, but as far as I know, it's, it's not doing anything um, like trying to share knowledge. Part of that is that you have to create a data set of all that knowledge, and so everyone would have to buy into having that data set be created. The skill e executes from the device. So you had a, uh, like a HTTP request to another the server out there. You had built a skill, program it, register it online. They put it on your device, and you said it keyboard that goes to the server, triggers that skill, sends it back to the client, and that would send off the request from that from the actual device to the server. Let me explain how skills work. Okay. Yeah. So whenever I ask it a skill. So let me, let me ask it to roll uh, 3D6. Hey, Mycroft, roll 3D6. Because I am a huge nerd. So it rolled. I rolled three six sided dice and got two five two for a total of nine. OK, so how that worked on here. There's a directory uh, under opt. So if I wander over to, da, 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 where's the dice skill? Yeah, so this is one here. So this is all running locally on the device itself. The only thing that it needs to do is figure out the speech to text piece. And that's the part that goes out to the internet to do that because it's a Raspberry Pi in there. Not a whole lot of power in there. And I think that's part of why they're trying to go with the FPGA and the Mark II, so that they don't have to go out to the internet quite so much to do that. Because it costs them money to run the server and whatnot. Um, so I think the idea is that they want to get more powerful hardware on the client so that they can do more of that stuff on the client rather than jump out to the server. But this, di this dice skill, first off, there's a directory here called dialog. And all of them have dialog. Uh, it's coded with uh, ENUS. Let me make it a little larger here. And if I cat this file, so there's only one line in here. And so it's a template. It's a templating language. So you have I rolled dice template, and I got results template off of that. If you take a look here at the uh, vocabulary, These are the wake, these are the words that will trigger this particular skill. And there's only one in there. It's roll. So if I say, hey Mycroft, roll a D20. It will then An say error occurred while processing a request in roll skill. That's because I didn't say one D20. There's a bug in it, so eventually I will probably try and fix it. <laughs> hey Mycroft, roll a one D20. And then it will go through and do that. I rolled one twenty sided dice and got fifteen for a total of fifteen. Okay, so that's all that's in that particular thing. And then the skill itself is this init I uh, file here. It's just a Python class in here. So you have your init piece, you have your initialized piece that Mycroft loads in. What time is it? <laughs> and then you have the roll handle the role intent and so it will then figure out all those pieces and then create a text string that comes back when it says self speak that text string then gets popped back into the mimic which then shoves it over into the speaker which then tells you what it did can we look it's it's pseudo random yeah it's pseudo random. Um, yeah, so it's it's random enough, and yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily take it to Vegas and have it run, you know, but it, but it works for the most part. 
Let me see if I can find the flip skill. Because that is interesting. So is the text to speech happening on the Pi or backwards? That's happening on the Pi itself. Okay. The only piece that is happening on the server that I'm aware of is the speech to text piece. Okay, so you, you say something, the cloud figured out what you said, goes and searches Wikipedia yeah. for an answer, sends text back. Well, it what it what it does with that. So, if you do the speech to text piece, what it does is it says, "Okay, here's this audio clip." Shoves it over into the cloud. The cloud comes back and says, "Here's what I think this person said." Shoves that back in here, and then at that point, everything is then taken over from Mycroft. So, the Mycroft has all that stuff baked into it. It's just the one piece that is more computationally expensive is the speech to text piece that gets shoved over there. The request to Wikipedia is happening from here. The only other, th the, the one other caveat. So things like uh, Open Weather Map and um, uh, probably Pandora, as well. Some of the stuff that requires a developer key that may be handled by the cloud. I'd have to take a look at the skills themselves in order to see what that does. And again, you can look at the skills yourself. You can download the code tonight and take a look and see what that what's where it goes with that. When you make a request that's going out to Wikipedia. Yeah. The, the request to Wikipedia came from locally here. Yes. That's my understanding of it. And we can take a look at the skill if you'd like and see how that works. The skills uh, be dynamically modified like save data from each run. Uh yeah, they're they're Python scripts, so yeah, I think they can. Um, where they save them to, I'm not entirely sure offhand. Um, I'm not dived too heavily into the skills. I just kind of played around a little bit with debugging one that was a Pomodoro skill that wasn't working. Yes? Is it easy to uh, modify what you have there to be able to control stuff from the house? There is a home automation skill. There's several of them, um, actually. Uh, let me see if I can find the skills here. And this is part of the reason that I got this particular one is because I use, um, I'm from the past and I use X10 and finding anything that really supports X10 um, can be kind of troublesome. So I actually run Hey You on that thing locally. I have not figured out how to get it hooked up. There's several ways to do it. It's just one of them requires you to run like a whole server thing to do Hey You stuff and it's like, eh, eh, I don't want to do that necessarily. Um, why did you not sign in? Or did you sign in? Let me go here. Oh no, it's asking do, me. Do the other systems work that way too? Does Alexa work that way? The, uh, the, the request to the web come from your local device and not from the central thing? You know? I don't know. I think my my gut would say yes. Because you're talking with Alexa about something that's Raspberry Pi grade hardware in there. So actually being able for it to do speech to text in real time would probably be very difficult for it to do. So it would have to send that over to you know Google or Amazon or whatnot to do that. Um, what it has internally to do that, again, I don't know. But they don't, offhand. but then the, the request, it's gotten text out of the speech, but that request to the web, then <coughs> the text goes from the local device out through your web connection to the web and comes back and gets processed. I, I thought that they were doing, I, I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know why they're, I what they're doing. I, I just sort of thought that they were doing. Yeah, I don't know exactly what they're doing. Um, here, let me show you the, the coin flip scale. So this is, um, the skill that when I said, hey, Mycroft, flip a coin. It is heads. So what is, what the, the coin flip sound is actually an MP3 file that's, that's local. And so that gets played, you know, before it, you know, gives you the final result, whether it's heads or tails and such. And so then it also adds, you know, it is heads or tails. And it, that's, it doesn't actually do um, print out directly, it is heads or tails. It has the speak dialog. Speak dialog goes again into dialog here. Oh, look, it's there's a German version. 
So there is there is support for that um, language. I'm just not sure what all the rest of the support is on there. Like in that um, the die rolling thing, it's going to be English no matter what. Uh, da -da -da. Let me see here. So if, okay, let's flip a coin. It is heads, and then the other one it is tails. So it goes through and finds the dialogue piece. And let me find one that's a little more interesting to show some of the dialogue. Uh, yeah, so let me, let me bring up the time skill since we've been playing around with that one the most. So dialogue for the time skill. So you have different variations of this. So one of them is just it gives you the, the date. This one, it is, you know, blah, blah, blah date. And then it's blah, blah date. So I could probably even edit this as well. It says, no, uh, I'd have to be rude to do that. So let me do that. Um, let me copy this first before I do that, because otherwise I'll screw some, something up, probably. Never it's never happened in a live demo, no. <laughs> Date, dialogue, dot. Old. All right, so if I go in here, I just delete these. Hey there, it's. So let's see what it does. Hey, Mycroft, what time is it? It's 8 o'clock. <laughs> Damn you. Does it only read those, though, when it boots up? It, might, it may very well. I may have to do an update on it. Um, hey, Mycroft, what date is it? That's exactly hey there, it's Tuesday, January 8, 2019. There we go. So you can modify it now, as well. Now, if you do it again, it goes to the second one? It, it probably does it randomly. Okay. I've not found a pattern for it. Hey, Mycroft, what date is it? Oh, you know, it's Tuesday, January 8, 2019. <laughs> so there you go. All right, I'll copy those back over. So yeah, you can change the dialogue if you want. You can make it a little more personal if you want. Uh, let's see, move, date, hold. Are there any other questions? Well, you've all been very patient. Uh, all right, let me take one more look here. There's yeah, there's Italian. So if you wanted to go in and, and have it do it in Italian, you could do so. Um, <laughs> okay, this one's like this one's a bit um silly. Hey Mycroft, sing. I'm gonna walk away now. <laughs> I would be happy to sing for you. She packed my bags last night. <laughs> I'm not going to make everyone suffer through that. There's a whole bunch of songs that they had recorded as well. Those are MP3s, though. Those are MP3s, though, yeah. So it's just going to pick one of those at random. Can you tell it which one to, to sing? I wish you could, because I would have it sing ELP's Jerusalem all the time. But it's not to be. You'd have to modify it to do so. I have the source code, so. Exactly. Um, let me see. Is there any other things that I want to cover? Is there anything else that anyone has any questions about that I can show real quick? The you know, piano bar does? I'm sorry, what? The piano bar? I have no idea. It had a skill there for the piano bar. Uh, uh, let's find out. Uh, read me? Why would I want to read that? <laughs> Okay, so this is for Pandora, oh. which unfortunately I can't really demonstrate because I don't have a Pandora account. Okay. 
Uh, da -da -da -da. I could have it do a joke, but I don't think you would like that. Um, <laughs> fortunes. Yeah, sure I would. Fortunes. Let's see what fortunes is. Oh, that's probably the jokes, yeah. Let's see what jokes it has in here. Uh, that would be... Another. So is there a way to, like, hook it up to, uh, like, turn lights on and things like that? Like that's part of the home automation stuff, and I, I really glossed over it, partly because I don't have that set up at the moment. Um, oh, there's a bedtime story skill. There we go. Oh, cool. Uh, here we go. Chris, uh, Mycroft? Hey, Mycroft. Crystal ball, will the world end tomorrow? There are no active alarms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rodent facts. I, that one stopped working for whatever reason. Trial dump. Oh, Zork. Hey, Mycroft? Zork. You might have to say that a different yeah, way. Yeah, but if I say play Zork, it'll... Hey, Mycroft? Play Zork. Play Zork. Sorry, I don't know how to play Zork. Yeah, all right. It's a play the adventure game. So you can... Um, there's a spelling. Hey, Mycroft? How do you spell Aardvark? Here we go. So there's home assistant skills. Uh, let's see what this does. So I think this is the one that is a Python based um, setup for doing uh, home automation stuff. Um, there's also a couple other ones that they have. One of which was um, uh, doing this from memory is not smart. Let me look at home. There's news, weather, laugh, da, da, da. So there's Lifex and OpenHab, um, which is one of the biggies out there. So you can set up another server to do um, OpenHab stuff and then have it interface with that. It's a, uh, ba, ba, ba. it is a home automation uh, B thing. Um, let's see if we we'll find it here. Well, it's empowering the smart home, so that's a good start. Uh, it is integration. Um, I think this is the one that's Java-based, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe not. This one, I think this was the one that was really heavy to set up, and that's why I kind of bounced <coughs> off of it. Um, home Assistant looked interesting, but I, I think that also required a server to set up as well. And so I, that was about as far as I got into it. Because uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to set up. Well, first of all, I didn't want to set up something like that on the on the Raspberry Pi um, version of it. Because I had um, Hey You already set up in that, and I just I just got it to do what I needed to do, and I didn't really explore it too far. Um, good God, that's a lot of companies. <laughs> yeah, Eclipse Smart Home. So I think this is the one that was Java based, and that's why I bounced off of that one pretty hard. Um, but yeah, there's a couple options for that, um, which are also open source well, stuff. Do they have like a server in the cloud that both devices in the house are talking to, or is there a server in the house that uh, both devices are communicating with? For which? Like home automation. I think for the home automation stuff, I think it's, um, it depends on how it's set up. I think it's one server that all the devices would then talk to. One server in the house. I've got a, uh, I've got a smart things. Okay. Same kind of smart thing thing. That's all in the cloud. You get a little box in your house, but yeah. all the real connection and everything is happening out in the cloud. Right. So, so that's that's in that particular phone. instance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Turn on my yeah. With Droid. Turn on the fan in my house. Yeah. I think it yeah. connects everything just through your wireless. Locally. Right. Mm -hmm. and they got plugs that were enabled. Yeah, exactly. So whatever the, then that plug is 
turn yeah. their light, then they can turn their light on and off. And again, part of, part of the reason that I've got that I'm so backwards on this stuff is because I have old stuff that I just mm -hmm. haven't decided to upgrade yet. Um, so I have to find one that number one supports X10, and then B uh, it doesn't require me to install a whole stack of Java just to do it, because yeah. that's just not happening anytime <laughs> soon. It's just how I'm wired. <laughs> So is there the intent uh, to keep it on the cloud, or uh, you were saying something about maybe something um, like on premises? And I don't the, understand. Is that's the speech to text stuff. Uh, the reason that that is in the cloud is because speech to text requires a lot of compute power to to do quickly and to do accurately. Um, so if I, you take a look at something like um, um, Minecraft. Mozilla Deep Speech. And the reason I know this is because I was doing research on this earlier. Um, so here was their article about why they were moving to Deep Speech. Number one is because uh, they were using Google Speech to Text beforehand, which is decidedly in the cloud. Um, so the Mozilla piece is more open, but it still requires a lot of compute power in order to, to handle you need like GPU level compute power in order to do this quickly because yeah you can do speech to t speech to text very slowly but if you're looking for any kind of response on that you know it'd be like you know what time is it and the thing comes back two hours later and says yeah well, <laughs> well so I'd like to flip that around I mean yeah. so they're going to offer you a service and if you pay them some money potentially I think I saw something enterprise for one thousand five hundred dollars a month or something like that for Mycroft or Pardon? for for the Mycroft system or for which? Yes, for Mycroft okay. system. Now, the problem is that we could easily overload them, right? So well, I think could we, you know, get? It, are they going to offer up an option to put that? Probably. Um, I think first off, they're looking at the consumer market uh, to try and get developers interested in this stuff. Because uh, again, the skills are really what makes this work. If it only has a handful of skills, then it's not really worth anything other than a very fancy alarm clock that talks to you. Mm -hmm. But if you have developers working on it, first off, they get interested in it. The other piece of it is, and I think this is where they're talking about for the enterprise stuff, they're talking on levels of like car automation and other uh, text-to-speech and speech-to-text applications for voice assistance. So that's what they're talking about as far as enterprise stuff. Yeah, if, if Ford wanted to go through and put a Mycroft on every single one of these people's desks, number one, I think they'd probably be very happy. And number two, yeah, you'd probably want something uh, negotiated with them to, to figure out pricing in that. But on the same token, too, if you wanted to set up something like this in a lab over at an automotive company, again, you can pick up something like the Google AIY kit, and for about 60 bones, you're ready to go, and you can play with it that way. Or you can set it up on your desktop again. You can, you can run it on your desktop without having to invest in the hardware. You just need a microphone and a decent pair of speakers. Yes? Mm -hmm. That uh, happens anonymously, right? And it's anonymous. The idea is that it is anonymous, yes. Uh, it is anonymous. So mm -hmm. Like, does it actually, your username, password, uh, and the MAC address, that can be stored locally while the data that needs to be analyzed can be sent to the cloud for anonymous? It still, it still knows... On, on that sense, it would still have to know who you are in order to get the data back to you. So you're still making a, a connection to it. So your IP address, your MAC address, and all that other stuff is still going to be available to them. The anonymization piece happens, once that is done, that's decoupled from your transaction. And if you store, if you tell them to store it, then yes, they go through the trouble of anonymizing it. it once the transaction is done, I'm not sure how long it is before they delete that particular thing. My idea is, my thought is that it's probably in the order of minutes because they don't want to keep it if they don't necessarily need it. Um, and that's their, their pledge, is to delete it as soon as it's no longer needed. And that's the part where if you opt into the anonymous um, 
data group, then yeah, they will go through the trouble of anonymizing it and pulling it apart and then throwing it out that way. Yeah, but they, they still need to know who you are in a sense in order to send it back to the device. Or at least they know that the connection has been made from this particular device, this MAC address, et cetera, and so then the data will be pulled back that way. They're going, they're going to stop selling this? I don't know. I hope they I hope they keep going with it because it's adorable. Yeah. 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 I mean, the thing is, whomever is doing their design, and they, th they, they actually have the person who's doing the design. I think if you look up Mycroft Hardware, um, Open Hardware. I mean, you can go to their GitHub site. Uh, here it is. So they have a GitHub with all the plans, all the PC boards, and all that other kind of stuff. And I think this person is the, the person who's responsible for the design that you see before you. But whomever had the idea to make it just absolutely adorable mm -hmm. is like, I, <laughs> that's brilliant. Like a kid's toy. Yeah, exactly. Sorry? No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. It's just. What's that? It says it wasn't. I said it wasn't out of program. Oh, well, it might have been. I don't know. Some of us have got some more senses of humor. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the idea is to take two uh, NeoPixels and an LED array and then turn that into a personality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of makes me think of Chumby. And it's a very heavily Chumby based, I think. They used to have an open Chumby where you could like take it apart and put it back together and all that. Right. Yeah. No, Chumby, I think, was one of the first attempts in this environment to try and come up with like a, an open personal assistant. You know, back in the days when a PDA before meant something. Before the voice part. Yeah, before the voice part. Because you had that, that touch screen, so it was kind of like this beanbag palm device. <laughs> with WebOS on it. With WebOS. Did it have WebOS on it? Or? I think so. But okay. Very yeah. Any other questions, or do you want to wrap it up? That's about all I have. It looks very familiar because last year at my previous job, we uh, we were doing con uh, conversational stuff with Python scripts, and it was an in in-house type deal uh, for vehicle automation. Okay. And uh, we were we were using text with uh, LTE text messages instead of voice activation. Gotcha. So beyond the voice. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, see, there is an on premises option. Spend $12,500 and buy a unit. Yeah, I mean, that's what, you know, Ford pocket change? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all very much. And We had a rest talk scheduled for tonight, we're, yes. We're, we're trying to schedule again. Then when that fell through, Sharon Kalani offered to do a great presentation on something to do with automotive computers. He had a family emergency. That fell through. Uh, Craig jumped in like immediately and said he'd take care of doing it tonight. So really, he really did. Thank you. Thank you. He was worried that his 30 to 45 minute talk <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't fill Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, it's because of all the pauses and whatnot, waiting for it to happen. <laughs> Mycroft helped. Yeah, it did. Thank you, Mycroft. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's waiting for you to give the command now. Yeah. Well, it's it's not only named after Sherlock Holmes, but there is apparently a, a short story or a, a story where uh, Mycroft is the AI. And I don't. I don't understand, but I'm learning new things. Yes, <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs>